Hello dear friends, yes I'm Brother Sean, the barefoot Franciscan monk, in fancy dress no doubt, but no, the purpose of this short video, it's a heart reflection for brothers and sisters who may feel alienated from a loving God. Oops, I shouldn't have used that word, should I? Because so many people today cringe when the word God is made, mentioned, and isn't that sad? Isn't it sad that so many of God's children feel so alienated, maybe helpless, because of their experience at the hands of God's representatives? Well, the title of this short video, Does God Have Any Favourites? What do you think? What's your heart saying to you? Is your heart saying yes? That he does have favourites. Because if you're saying that, then I have to disagree. God has no favourites. Even his beloved son Jesus, the barefoot Galilean. Though he was loved by his father, mother God. He wasn't any more favoured than you or I. Whoops, should I have said that? Yes, I should. Because... When you look at history, and you look at the, the beautiful people that God made, and you look at how they evolved as a person on their faith journey, some went on to become great politicians, like Stalin, Mussolini, Hitler, and in our generation, Saddam Hussein, and of course there was Pol Pot. Good men, great men. But sadly, they had a choice, and they chose power and ego and control over surrender. But it has to be said that they were loved by God because they are made in the image and likeness of God. Whether you're black or white, yellow, green or blue, whether you're gay or straight, whether you're an alcoholic or not, whether you're a drug user or an abuser, whether you're a drug peddler, a prisoner, someone on death row, whether you're homeless, a prostitute, someone who peddles porn, you are loved by God. And if any of you who are watching this <clears throat> are in an unworthy place, where you're feeling low self-worth, low self-esteem, <clears throat> the time has come for you to realize that you are loved. And you don't have to lift a, a hair on your head to win God's approval. When you look back in history, and history is a good indicator, isn't it? <clears throat> Forgive me, I've got a sore throat. When you look back at history and you see what the indigenous peoples did to please God, or their God, by offering human sacrifice. Today is no different, because there are many today who have so many false gods in their life. Yeah, false gods. And they give that false god more adulation than they do the Creator who, who loved them, who formed them in their mother's womb. So we need to revisit this concept we have of God. And I do hear what people say to me that they are frightened of God because I was, as a young nursing monk, I was petrified of the word God and God the Father, woof, I cringed because I use my own personal experiences of my blood father, my birth father, who was a beautiful man, so good looking, so attractive, he had everything going for him, but like my younger brother, thoroughly spoiled. Thoroughly spoiled, with no appreciation or values, where they just end up abusing themselves and their beautiful gift of love. But my fear of God was rooted in my relationship with my own blood father, birth father. 
because to the outside world he was wonderful. The Earl Flynn look-alike, the voice of Maria Lanza. I desperately craved his love. And all I got was abuse, both physical and sexual. But I love him, and I forgive him. But when I entered the monastery, I had this concept that God the Father would be a, a tyrant. But now in later life, as I've grown older and a little wiser, I see my Father Mother God as a loving Father Mother God. And they do not ask me to sacrifice my life, to throw myself into the lion's den and be eaten alive as I was for many years by trying to please other people so that I could be loved and accepted. And I guess that's the downside when you're affected by chronic depression or you've had a, a painful memory from childhood where your innocence was compromised. You have this built-in survival kit that says, if I please you, you will love me and like me. Well, I'm afraid that never worked for me. But now it does, because I've surrendered my heart to a loving Father Mother God who does not ask me to make sacrifice. He doesn't ask me to walk on coals. Or as I watched on the television the other evening about how they celebrate Holy Week in the Catholic countries, especially in Italy, where they have these circular discs that they place on the hand with spikes, which is glass, and they bash their legs with it to draw blood. And literally in some of those villages, the streets are flowing in blood from people who are punishing themselves so that they can feel what Christ felt. Now that doesn't wash for me, that's scary. I find living this life hard enough without inflicting any more pain on myself. Managing bipolar, managing a crumbling spine from years of heavy lifting as a nurse, and trying to deal with the dramas that unfold each day, that is more than enough for me. But what I'm saying to you is, to come back to the theme, does God have favorites? Absolutely not. He loves every child of God, me included, and does not ask me to do anything that would compromise my inner peace. Even as an enclosed contemplative monk, I'm freelance, I'm not part of the mainstream Christian family. I'm on the outside looking in, rather than like years ago, I was on the inside looking out, trying desperately to get out from a system that was so mind controlling. But today I'm free. I drop my own rule of life as a member of the Teo community. I join my brothers and sisters in different parts of the world live each day online using the internet for morning and evening prayer and the beautiful vigil we have that goes live every night at nine o'clock london time is to unite us so that we are one and we are one and we are loved and trust me saddam hussein despite all the wrong he did even colonel Gaddafi, They are loved with the same love as you and I, as you or I are. But they chose to follow a different path, one of ego, where they created a mindset of fear and domineered and abused the children of God. And it's happening today in the world. Look at South Africa, Zimbabwe. Look at Syria. Egypt, even some of the states in America, where some of the, the local governors are so ruthless in their interpretation of the law. Look at China. No world, no country in our world is exempt from abuses to mankind. And as Wolf Moondan said, where in history has mankind taken such a brutal turn? Well, today I can assure you that you are loved with the same love 
that was given to Jesus, to Muhammad, to all the great saints, including Francis, Hildegard of Bingen, even Archbishop Romero and Martin Luther King. They are loved with the same love that you and I are. So embrace it, surrender to it, enjoy it.